So what would this Department of Peace do about, let's say, Ukraine? Well, the Department of Peace would have less to do with what is happening in Ukraine today and more to do with creating situations where there would not have been such an such a, a probability that something like Ukraine would even exist. You know, I, I do, I'm not a pacifist. I do not believe that there is never appropriate uh, need or use uh, for military action. But I see the military like I see a, um, uh, a surgeon. If you need surgery, then of course you want to have the very best surgeon. The United States should not only have the very best surgeon, but the very best surgeon on hand. But a reasonable person tries to avoid surgery if possible. Now, I don't think that this specifically has to do with the Department of Peace, but it certainly has to do with who I am and who I would have been and would be as president. I don't care what your position is on Ukraine today. I think that all of us can see that there was very irresponsible behavior on the part of the U.S. government poking the bear when it comes to Russia's view of NATO. And I think that that's not specifically related to a Department of Peace per se, but it does have to do with a very different, uh, more sober uh, perspective on the part of the U.S. government and its... Um, lack of humility and lack of reasonable analysis, including psychological analysis towards someone like a Vladimir Putin. They poked him, they poked him, they poked him. And that was more than unwise. So what would you do now? Well, I, I, you know, I'm an anti-imperialist and I think if you're going to be against US imperialism, you have to also be against Russian imperialism. That's how I see it. Uh, I do recognize the things the United States did wrong in terms of poking the bear. I do recognize including uh, some uh, fast and loose with NATO that was unwise, uh, the HS missiles in Poland and so forth. I, I'm not in any way excusing that. However, to me, in my mind, none of that justifies uh, Vladimir Putin's behavior now. I think a lot of our, what's happening with Ukraine comes down to how you view Putin. Do you think this is all he wants? Some of my friends say, this is all he wants. It's all he wants and he'll be happy. Just let him have that. <laughs> I don't believe that. You look at what happened with Crimea. You look at what's happening now. He takes what he wants. He takes a beat. He comes back for more. Um, when you look at Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, when you look at the fact that Finland, which is played this a neutral. They didn't want to be part of NATO. They didn't want any part of it. And now they want to be in NATO. I think that, you know, when I hear someone like Robert Kennedy uh, talk about the humanitarian disaster, which we all see, but he talks as though, let's end the humanitarian disaster. If the United States just pulls out all support for Ukraine, the idea that that would end the humanitarian disaster is absurd. It would begin the next phase of a profound humanitarian disaster uh, when you think in terms of Putin and the uh, basically we're talking about the occupation of Ukraine. That's another thing I find some people very selective in where they have a problem with occupations. That is an occupation and that is a grabbing of land and a sovereign country. I know a lot of people, particularly on the left, do not agree with me about this. There has to be a negotiated settlement. That's the only way that this can end. Of course, it has to be a negotiated settlement. That goes without saying. I would like it to be a negotiated settlement when there is still a Ukraine to negotiate. But isn't there more of a chance? I mean, there is a Ukraine, to right? Ukraine exists now. And we know that there would have been a more favorable negotiation earlier, like in April of 2022, which we know Boris Johnson scuttled. So why do we think that it'll get better the longer the war goes on? Or why do you well, think that, I should say? Well, first of all, even though I do tend to agree with you about that trip of Boris Johnson, I remember saying it myself, yeah. like, the, I don't believe that? any of that. Uh, there are those who would say that that's not, that that's, there's no proof of that. However, on the Boris Johnson thing, I agree with you. At this point, they're in the middle of their counteroffensive. And um, that counteroffensive 
you know, winter is coming upon us. So that can't continue once winter is upon us. I support their having what they need in order to get basically the best deal possible. And also, I want to say something else. When you look at the way the Ukrainians are fighting that war, when you look at the spirit with which they are fighting for their country, that doesn't happen if people are only puppets of the U.S. war machine. Now, there is a U.S. war machine. Of course, there's a U.S. war machine. Of course, there is a blob. Of course, we have to cut off the snake of that war machine. I'd like to see 20% at least of that military budget taken off. I understand, and I'm, I'm the first to say it, that, that, that most of our military activity has more to do with profits for Raytheon and Northrop Grumman and Boeing than with any serious consideration of, of sober foreign policy. Uh, most of our, we, you know, we sell arms to 60% of the world's dictators. The primary work of the, of the, um, of the, uh, of the State Department at this point has more to do with arms sales than has to do with actually waging peace in the world. I understand all that. But on this issue of Ukraine, I feel that it is a sovereign nation that has been imperialistically invaded by another country. I believe that the stability of Europe is involved here. And um, for that reason, and I understand that it's not popular with some people, for that reason, I, I stand with Ukraine. Listen, uh, Franklin Roosevelt led us through the, new, the Depression. He created the New Deal, and he led us through World War II. And um, sometimes I believe you have to draw a line, and I believe that uh, Vladimir Putin needs a line drawn. That's just how I see it. My opinion on this is that Putin will take part of Ukraine, and it, it can be after hundreds of thousands of people die, mm -hmm. uh, unless we get NATO involved in, or or we get boots on the ground, like some kind of airstrikes or boots on the ground. I think is the only thing that would prevent, would, would make. Putin give up any of the things that he already has gained. So if we stop now, he will be very happy because he thinks he's winning that war. They both think they're winning. They're, they're, they're at a place where both of them, neither one wants to stop right now because they don't both think they're winning. So what is it you think that would happen if we say, okay, Vladimir, we want to talk? What do you think would then happen? Well, you have to try. And then, uh, well, there was a yeah, meeting you, in Saudi you, you Arabia. A... There was a meeting in Saudi Arabia a few weeks ago. They were all there. This is a multipolar world now. This is no longer just the U.S. There is there is China. There is Brazil. Right. There is India. They, they and, all yeah. met in Saudi Arabia. Right now, Russia itself is not. If you said to Russia, "Let's have peace talks," right now, Russia doesn't want Russia. Right now, they're like, "We're winning." What is it that you think we could do? to make them not just keep going? Well, I think that you try to, you call for a ceasefire. Then if they violate the ceasefire, you can respond to that. But I do Russia? also think that South, yeah. what's interesting, and this isn't getting a lot of coverage, but obviously you and I, although we disagree on certain things, we agree that the U.S. had no interest in, in brokering a peace. They poked the bear because they wanted this to happen. And mm. Lloyd Austin keeps saying, uh, you know, people keep saying that the goal of this or the priority of the United States is to weaken Russia. I don't I don't think you or I think that it's to save the lives of Ukrainians. But what's interesting uh -uh. is that you've had uh, the president of South Africa who's actually met with Z uh, Zelensky and Putin, despite the fact that there's no political will for this to happen mm -hmm. coming from the United States. And he has said that they have actually made some gains. And so I so, think that you have to try. I mean, the very least is you have to exhaust all options. I, 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 I certainly agree with that. I certainly agree that the United States should try. Russia, however, does not want a ceasefire right now. So you say the United States doesn't want a ceasefire. Russia doesn't want a ceasefire. So if you say, and, I, and I, I'd be with you on that. Great. Let's have a ceasefire. I'm all for that. Do you think Russia, you, you, so do you, um, in what universe is Russia's response to that, okay, we'll stop now? What, what motivation is there for Russia to stop now? If we stop, if, if you say to, to Ukraine, stop now, what, makes you, what motivation is there for Russia to stop now? To stop bleeding. To stop what? Bleeding. 
oh, he, listen, stop bleeding. They're the ones who started this. They're the one who invaded. <laughs> There's no reason for them to stop. They think they're winning. Well, what, why would they stop? Well, I don't, because I think that they want to, uh, Who? it may be too late to stop right now, honestly, and that's a sad thing because of what happened. But I think that we have to try and see what happens. I'll go, okay. Because so if you don't try. Okay, yeah. so I'd be, be glad to say, okay, let's have a, have a ceasefire. And you know, they both look at you like, if, if I said, okay, I'm the American president, let's have a ceasefire, they would both look at you like, isn't that now, what, it's like, true. It's true with Zelensky. We could have some power over that. But why would Putin, Putin think, great, cease? I, that's what I mean, Putin would say. Great, cease. I'm all for it. By all means, cease. But, I mean, isn't the, the goal to do everything we can to try to get this to stop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go with that. I'll go with that. But right. uh, uh, if, if Putin, if I was standing in front of Putin, and Putin said to me, oh, fine, President Williamson, fine, by all means, stop firing. I, I as, as the U.S. president, it would you be You mean, say, my... if he said, by, by all means, stop giving Ukraine the weapons to... Uh-huh. Yeah. He'd say, fine, great, stop doing that, and, and I'm all for that ceasefire. Do you think I'm stupid enough that I think that he would just say, oh, okay, that's so, it was great. I'm well, you, you stop, and then you wait and see if it... You right. Okay. Great. Okay. Then we came yeah, to an agreement. Stop. Yeah. Okay. Great. Stop okay. Great. Yeah. All right. Great. <laughs> so I was yeah. Okay. I'll be fine with that. Okay. Yeah. I'll be fine with that. All right. Let's then you, then you and I would and disagree about, yeah. continue with the invasion, breaking the ceasefire. Okay. So you and I came to an agreement. 